everybody, my name is Heather and I am really, really excited today to give you a tour of my tiny home. Um, I've been living in my tiny home for about a year and a half now. Uh, it's been in a couple different places. Uh, I designed this house and worked with a local builder to make it a reality. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to give you a tour. We'll start with the door. Um, it's a beautiful custom built door by a local uh, carpenter, it's so stunning. I wood piece that I loved, and he uh, inlaid it into this door. I really wanted to have a nice round top door and a really bright color. Um, and then also the siding, as you can see, it looks like shingles, but is actually PVC. Uh, so that means really low maintenance. But I liked the option to have the look of shingles um, and still a really beautiful color. So uh, yeah, let's go on inside. So welcome to my home. Um, as you can see when you walk in, it feels very, very, very spacious. This was definitely designed on purpose to feel very big and very open. Um, the first thing you notice when you walk in is that there is a full-size kitchen. I cook a lot, so that was probably one of my biggest priorities to have a full oven, a full stove, um, a really good size uh, refrigerator. It's not the biggest refrigerator you can have, but it fits you know, more than enough groceries for two weeks. Um, has a full-size fridge and freezer, uh, so that's been great. There's storage above the stove for canned stuff and dried stuff. Um, over here there's a 30-inch sink, which is also really important to me, so you could actually do all your dishes. Um, over here there's you know several different cabinets, but we have things like all of our Tupperware, toaster, blender, grilling stuff. Um, over here is just another pantry, so plenty of room to store all of the food that we need. There's never really been a shortage of storage. Um, as you can see on the counter, we keep our drying rack and our juicer usually out, but um, if we ever wanted to put it away and just have more counter space, um, the cabinets actually extend all the way to the back of the house, so everything fits around this corner here. So there's space to clear and store everything. Um, you'll see our steps to the gooseneck actually open so there's storage in every single one. That's where we keep our reusable bags, gift bags, plastic bags, all of our camping backpacks, rags to clean, coolers, snowboarding boots, a little um, dust buster that turns into a vacuum with a handle or Swiffer. So everything we need to clean and pack and go on vacation is in here. Um, and then coming on up to the gooseneck portion of the house, uh, this room is really flexible on purpose. Um, I knew when I was designing this house that I was going to really want to stay in this house for several years, if not longer, and I knew that my needs were going to grow and change the longer I was in this house. So when I first moved in, this room was really just a yoga mat, some meditation cushions, and some painting supplies. Um, later, I put in a couch and had a little cozy chair and an end table. Um, no longer have a couch, and now there's this really great kitchen table here. Um, extends out this way, as you can see, but also if we're having other people, it pulls away from the wall and extends out equally on the other side. So it's a really big table. It seats many people, and we just have to borrow a couple chairs from neighbors if we want to seat more than a few folks. Um, we keep our stools right here um, that go to this table. Have our record player, some more storage, just some stuff for games. Um, and then over here, this is our storage and secondary loft. So as you can tell right now, it's mostly being used for storage, um, but you'll see that there's a mattress that's folded up, a twin size mattress. So this can be guest sleeping right now. It's really just storage for extra bedding, blankets, some painting supplies, some just files. We have this ladder here that used to be coming down kind of like some stairs to hold plants and, you know, have access there, but we weren't using it all that much. So um, the beauty is that this plan is super flexible. So we move the tables and chairs and the record player and the plants around almost every couple weeks, just playing around with it. Um, and every time we feel like, oh, we need something different, we just figure out what we need and the plan is really wide open. So um, there's so much flexibility in it. So yeah, you can see Right now it's kind of like a dining room area. 
Um, I want to show you the um, chandelier, which I'm really excited about. I found a lot of chandeliers I liked online that looked similar, um, but they were really quite expensive. So what I ended up doing was building my own. Um, I really love crystals and collecting crystals and just um, they make me feel really excited and happy. So what I did is I found these really beautiful raw rose quartz crystals and I made those the centerpiece of the chandelier and then all the smaller stones around accenting it are actually from different friends who wanted to be a part of the house in some way, shape, or form. So they gave me a stone or a crystal that they wanted to be a part of the home. So yeah, that's, it's a really fun piece. It's on a dimmer, so kind of depending on time of day and the mood, we adjust the lighting that way. Um, currently, uh, we have this bench here for all of our shoes and sort of mail and keys and flashlights and headphones, all the things that we need as we're coming in and out during the day. Um, and a sitting chair here. I keep these two folding tables behind. So sometimes if I'm trying to do work and eat breakfast and maybe um, I don't want to sit up at the full table, I can sit down here and get some work done. Um, again, just like the gooseneck, this part of the house is really, really flexible. So the table used to be down here. We've had a lot of different combinations of having the table right here, the table right here, this chair here, or this chair up in the gooseneck. So like I said, we really move this space around a lot um, just to keep it interesting and also keep playing around with space and how we're going to utilize it best um, since our needs are always changing. So that brings us over to this side of the house. You'll see um, we have steps up to the, the main bedroom loft, but they're a little bit steeper than normal steps. So it's sort of in between steps and a ladder. So it's definitely great. Um, I enjoy having this more than a ladder. I definitely can get in and out of bed easier, but it takes a little bit of getting used to just having the bigger steps to climb. Um, also, these steps are all storage, so um, I'll just open all of these up and you can take a look. You can see that that top little one is mostly for like paperwork and files. The bottom one acts as primarily my closet. Um, some extra storage and then more paperwork and kind of miscellaneous things. So there's so much storage space that this plan affords, um, which was also important to me because I really wanted to live small and be very intentional and conscientious about the things I was having, but I also didn't want to feel like I didn't have stuff for, or I didn't have space for the things that I actually wanted and needed. Um, so yeah, so I didn't feel like I had to give up any anything that um, I didn't want to give up. So that brings us over to the bathroom. Um, it's a really, really big bathroom. It's bigger than the bathroom I even had when I lived in apartments uh, around the city. So you'll see this is sort of the primary closet space. All of my stuff is in the back. All my partner's stuff, like his pants, hang right here. Um, we put this dresser in, so this kind of acts also as our storage. Um, even though we decided that this was going to be storage for now, that it was really valuable to us as a closet, it's actually hooked up and is big enough to fit a small stackable washer and dryer. So that was important to me to have flexibility in the future if I changed my mind and I said, you know, I really do want a washer and dryer in the house, I have space for it. So um, I was really, like I said, trying to plan ahead and say, you know, I want to live in the house, this house for a long time. I want to make sure it can grow with me and is flexible. So having that option to put in a washer and dryer was really important to me. You'll also notice something unique to some tiny houses that we actually have a bathtub and a shower. So I really, really, really love taking baths. So um, we put in this a little bit smaller than average, but um, it's good enough for a nice bubble bath every once in a while. So I really enjoy it. Um, and like I said, it's um, exactly what I wanted in a house. Um, in between the bath and the sink, we have our hamper. Um, this is a vanity that I got at the ReStore and a friend helped me um, redo the fronts of all the the cabinet doors, so that was really nice. And then of course a medicine cabinet for more storage. We keep some stuff up here. Um, and then you'll see we have a composting toilet. It's the separate villa, so it's been really great. Um, I also had the house plumbed for a traditional toilet. So again, if in the future we're in a different parking place and we're not allowed to have a composting toilet or we just really are 
feeling like we'd like a more traditional toilet setup, then the house is ready to switch right, over. So welcome to the bedroom. Um, just like the rest of the house, the space has sort of changed and shifted a lot. When I first moved into the house, I was living just with me and my dog here. Um, and then my partner moved in about nine months later. So um, this space went from being just me with all my books and all my things to two people's things. So as you could see, just a normal um, queen size bed. Um, the mattress is right on the ground. And then you can see that there's some shelves. And this is the stuff that we um, had to shift around just to make a little bit more room for a couple different people's things. But you could see we have our more books, some knitting supplies, extra blankets and sheets, more books and some miscellaneous stuff. Um, you can also see we've got a lot of art, which we also change up and move. Um, this is really, really special. My house is called Desiderata, and it's after my favorite poem by Max Ehrman. So it's a little hard to see in the video, but that's the poem that the house is named after. And as you can see, just more art from a lot of artists that we love. And of course, the skylight. So this is the view when I first wake up in the morning, which is really, really, really lovely. All right.